Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a tiny planet or a little planet using GIMP 2.10.6. This is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. And thanks to a brand new filter found in GIMP 2.10.6 this is actually a really simple effect to achieve and I'm going to show you guys how to get this done in today's tutorial. But of course before we get into that I want to direct you guys over to my website at DaviesMediaDesign.com as always, we have tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here, as well as Project Translate. You can watch one of our GIMP playlists, support us on Patreon, or look at our Poll of the Week results, so definitely check those items out. You can also enroll in our best-selling GIMP photo editing from beginner to pro photo retoucher course. And you can purchase official DMD merch at our Teespring store. And a portion of all of our profits go to Habitat for Humanity, as well as support our channel and help us make more GIMP tutorials. And speaking of supporting our channel, you can also support us on Patreon. And here you'll get access to exclusive Davies Media design extras and additional GIMP content. And you can see we've got three goals set so far and we're already 12% of the way through our first goal. So become a patron today and help Davies Media Design grow. And here's the photo I'll be using in today's tutorial. This is a panoramic photo of downtown Miami. You can download this photo for free on Pixabay. Just click the download icon here. Choose the dimensions of the image. I use the 1920 by 711 and then click download. So to start, I'll go to file. And in my case, I'll go to open recent because I did open up this image recently. And here's the panorama image. So this is the original opened up into GIMP. And now I'm going to apply the little planet filter. And again, this is a brand new filter found in GIMP 2.10.6. So go to filters, map, and choose little planet. And so you can see immediately this is turned into a little planet. And just like that one click, we've got a little planet image here. But I do need to make some adjustments to this because I think that some of the elements of the image should be shifted around so that you know, things aren't getting cut off like these clouds here and just so we can get a better view of everything going on here. Plus we need to take care of this seam right here and we're gonna do that in a minute. But I'm gonna start with the pan feature. So this allows me to sort of shift the image around an axis and there's actually two features that do this because the uh, spin feature actually does sort of the same thing. You can see, so pan and spin both spin the image around the camera's axis but I want the main part of the city to be up here up top and then I want the clouds to sort of come out here in the bottom just because I think that creates a pretty cool composition. And I'm just gonna adjust this slightly to about there. And so that allows us to get really as much of these elements in the photo as possible and I think this creates the best composition. You can also tilt this if you want so you can change sort of the perspective of the photo. And I'm not gonna do that for this tutorial because I do wanna create a perfectly circular tiny planet. So I'm just gonna set this back to 90, but just know that that feature is there. And then you also have a resampling method here that you could choose from uh, various resampling methods. And if you hover over this, GIMP will actually tell you which resampling methods are best depending on which setting you have. And so it'll tell you that the uh, nearest value here for resampling method is the best when you're using this feature without the inverse transform option checked and this is the inverse transform option there. So make sure that's unchecked and I can also adjust the zoom here so I can zoom in closer if I really want to or I could zoom further out but I'm just going to zoom so that this is perfectly framed the way I want it to be. So I'll go with about right there and I'll click OK. The next thing I want to do is crop this. So I'm going to grab my crop tool and I have my center lines here as the guides that are going to be in the middle of my crop tool. And that's just going to help me center up the tiny planet here. And I'm going to use the outsides of this crop box to adjust the size of the crop. And then I'm going to use my center lines to try to find the center of this tiny planet. And then I'll click and that will go ahead and crop that. So the next thing I'm gonna do is take care of this seam and this seam occurs because your photo has to be wrapped around in what's called a 360 by 180 degree panoramic equirectangular image. That's just the official technical term for how this little planet effect is created. But it does create a seam here so we have to get rid of the seam. And to do that I'm gonna grab my zoom tool and zoom in on the areas that I want to uh, work on for this seam. And then I'm just going to grab my heel tool and you could duplicate this layer if you want, but I'm just going to use the heel tool directly on our final image. And what I'll do is I'll hold control and click. And if you need to adjust your brush size, you can do so here, or you could use the left and right brackets on your keyboard. And I'm actually going to decrease the size of my brush a little bit because right now it's a little too large. 
And now what I'm gonna do is just paint with the heel tool over this seam. And I'm gonna make sure that I stay on the parts of the water here. The source right here needs to stay within the water, otherwise it's going to start grabbing colors from these items here, which don't match the color of the water. And I can always move the source down below here. And you can see that as we're doing this, it is cleaning up that seam there. And now it's barely noticeable. And I'm just gonna increase the size of my brush real quick and go over this one last time. And so now that seam right there is pretty much gone. Here it's a little complicated because we've got a seam where the water and the part of the sidewalk here are meeting, and these aren't the same elements. You can use the heel tool right here to sort of blend this in and blur it together a little bit. It's not really going to do you much good there, so I'm just gonna hit Control Z, and I'm going to, for the most part, just leave the seam right through here because I don't think that that really is going to uh, improve much. But now I'm gonna come over here, so we've got two different color skies meeting right here, so we need to blend those in a little bit more. And then all through here, we've got the seam going through the sky, so we'll need to blend that. So I'm gonna come back over here, hold my control key and click to grab a source, and then I'm going to paint over the seam with this heel tool. And so you can see already that this is starting to blend, and it makes it really hard to tell that these are two different areas of sky. And then I'm just gonna move down the line here with the seam and I'm hitting control to change my source and then I'm just painting over the seam to sort of blend this line in with the objects around it. And of course you can increase the size of your brush, hold control, and this allows us to paint larger areas a little bit more quickly. And now you can see this seam is pretty much completely gone now. So let me grab the zoom tool, hold control and zoom out. So the issue here is you can still tell that there's a seam there. You can tell the colors are a little bit darker right here. So what I did was I grabbed my airbrush tool, then I held control and grabbed a color of the sky right here. So now our color is this blue from the sky. And I've got the opacity of this turned down to about a little bit below 50% and then I'll increase the size of my brush, and I'm just going to paint over this little piece of sky here, and then I'll hold control, grab another color as we go down the sky, because the sky does change colors as we move down it. And so I'm just using this airbrush tool to paint over the darker spots and try to help make this blend in a little bit. So you can see the darkness starts to fade a little bit more. And we can also grab the clone tool, which is going to directly clone an area that we choose. So if I hold control and click on this area, it is going to directly clone this source area and it'll move with our brush as we go. So it'll directly copy these areas as we move. I do also want to decrease the opacity of this. And actually we do have to adjust the alignment first. So right now it's set to fixed. I'm going to change this to aligned, which means it'll move with my brush as my brush moves. So you can see there, that now our clone tool is moving around with our brush. And I'm just changing the source as I go, just to try to blend these colors in a little bit better. And it's still not perfect right now, but we're gonna work on that some more in a second. And you can see I'm sort of creating like artificial clouds right there to help blend that in a little bit better. All right, so we're going to grab the heel tool one last time, hold control, grab an area of sky near the seam, and then just paint over this one last time. And that's going to help blend all these colors in together. And you can see that seam is pretty much all gone now. So now if I grab my zoom tool and zoom out, here we have our final product of our image that now looks like a tiny planet. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. If you liked it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign. You can also visit our website at daviesmediadesign.com. You can enroll in our best-selling GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy. And of course, you could support us on Patreon and help our channel grow. I'll include all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.